today so I just wore a hat you know you know you have bad hair days but I just hope everybody's doing great out there and I hope you're having a great Easter Easter Sunday um, I want to say thank you to a guy named Jeremy Fleener for sending these care package he owns this place in LA called the Tonga Hut it's LA's oldest tiki bar so he sent these t-shirts, hoodies, and this guy. What do you think I should do with this guy? Apparently he's a remake of uh, the drooling bastard fountain that's been in North, been in the North Hollywood bar since the place opened. This is mug number 70 of 100, friends. Anyway, uh, man, great morning. I went over to the, my dear beloved ex-wife's house and did an Easter egg hunt with the with the sweet boys. Man, that's great. You know, she's great at holidays. She makes it fun for them, you know. I, I don't really have much holiday spirit. We've talked about this. I'm not great at entertaining the boys on, on Christmas and Halloween and all that stuff. She's great about that. They were having fun with their Easter baskets. Marshall was eating way too much chocolate candy. And then he gets all... You know that sugar buzz, and then he gets all tired. That's what happens to kids. It's like, it's like a drug. Um, some VCB stuff today. Let's see. Um, oh, one guy said, oh, Larry, the comments section got pretty spicy yesterday. Yeah, it did. Holy hell. I mean, Jesus. I mean, 99% of you guys out there that actually have a sense of humor got the joke, right? But, boy, there was about... I had, like, had to, I had to block like a dozen people. They were just totally out of hand. Um, uh, just having a little fun with the clickbait thumbnail thing. Just, just, just going for a laugh, people. And then, uh, man, we got some. It created quite a ruckus. Brother attorney against brother on the homeschooling channel. It was a dark day, and that shall be a stain on the homeschooling legacy forever. Yesterday, brother attorney against brother. In the comments section, yeah, uh, uh, man, it's crazy. You know, I mean, what I learned yesterday there, there, it may be a disappointment to some of you guys out there to learn that that Uncle Larry is not a homophobe, and I'm not a racist. Uh, so, if you uh, are uncomfortable getting free guitar lessons 
from someone who's not a homophobe, I have an idea of how we can resolve this. Um, let's not make a big deal out of it. You don't even... You don't even have to leave a nasty comment. You don't have to leave any comment at all. You can just unsubscribe. And we can move on with our lives, all of us. There doesn't have to be any nastiness. Uh, look, I'm not, I don't, you guys know, I don't talk about politics, religion, none of that shit. I, I'm not standing for anything. I'm not cutting anything down. I'm not, I have these old fashioned childish beliefs that's, you know, as long as we're not hurting anybody, hurting any kids, people should be allowed to do whatever the hell they want. That's an old, I know it's very childish to think that way. But sadly, that's that's my beliefs there regarding that. And uh, I don't want anybody telling me what to be doing with my life. And, and I don't want to tell anybody else what to do with their life either. I know that's childish. I'm sorry for that, if that bothers anybody out there. Um, but, you know... I think yesterday, as painful as it was, was a good exercise. I think I think I think it was good. To, it was good to figure out who to block. It really it's going to help the future of the channel. And uh, thanks to all you guys out there that actually have a sense of humor and you know what a, you know. I always go for the joke. I always go for shock factor. You guys know me. Um, I don't mean nothing by any of it. It's just going for a laugh, people. That's all it is, okay? I like a laugh. I don't know why anybody else wouldn't, you know? So, uh, a couple things in VCB. I want to say thank you to Peter Hall. Peter Hall, longtime homeschooling viewer. Sweet, sweet guy. Lives in the Caymans. He, he consistently sends lovely donations, and he's a beautiful fellow. We email back and forth. Big Les Paul fan he is. Um, thank you, Peter. You do not have to do this, but thank you. You're a very sweetheart guy, man. Anything you need from me, you got it. Okay, pal. Uh, hey, Tom, uh, I know you don't like to name guitars, and I know it creeps you out when people get, call guitars she or her, but have you ever named a guitar? You know, I, 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 I do have major uh, issues with all that naming guitars but but i i'm gonna be honest this old bird the one that i've had the longest i did write on the case grandma i did write that on there uh kind of as a joke uh because i heard that stephen stills calls his old p bass grandma and i just thought oh, i should maybe i should do that too but do it and this is the perfect guitar to call grandma it's the one that it's the bird i've had the longest it's the best one It'll always be with me. I can't sell this one. A lot of memories with this bird. Kind of like my old convertible. Too many memories to let go of. Um, uh, so yeah, Grandma is the only one I ever named. Um, let's see. Well, I got a crazy week this week, man. Sessions, doing some shit with Brett Papa. Gonna be fun. Uh, gonna be busy this week. May not have time to do many videos. Mm made free videos that you guys can make, leave nasty comments on. I'm kidding. Most of you guys are very cool. I know that. Oh, man. Uh, I, I think I, I, did, I did block probably 10, 12 people yesterday. But that's okay. That's okay. We're good. We're going to be able to move on. Everybody's cool. Um, t hey, here's a cool question. Hey, Larry, uh, what are some pickups... Vintage pickups that look like they would sound amazing, but they don't. I like that. I like that. And there are plenty of those. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, did, I, I went to the trouble of making a little show and tell uh, for you. I picked out four classic pickups that I think look like they would sound amazing, but in my experience, do not. Exhibit A, the 60s. Supro pickups, the ones that everyone thinks are humbuckers, but they're not. In my uh, mid-30s pawn shop guitar phase where I bought every single model of Harmony, Silvertone, Tysco, blah, 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 I found these pickups to be quite eh. They don't, they look cool, but they don't sound like much. They're very weak. They don't have any balls. 
here's another one. The early 70s, uh, Seth Lover extended range humbucker. I, I've never been a fan of these. I think they look cool, and that's the end of it. Uh, I do not like those pickups. Here's another one. The K Speed Bump. I think it has about a half a K output. Uh, they look cool, but boy, they don't sound like much. They're uh, probably the weakest of any of the vintage pickups you'll ever find on any guitar, output-wise. And here's another one I've never been crazy about, the Harmony uh, Hershey Bar pickups. Uh, a lot of people are, are into these. I am not. If I was going to go down the old Harmony rabbit hole, I would end up... I, le I love the pickups that are on the Harmony Stratotones, the Jupiters, the Diarmans that are on there. They're way stronger than these things, and they, they have way more open top end, and they're way better. There's other old pickups that look like they'd be amazing that aren't. Like the pickups that came out in 1959, Epiphone uh, Coronet. They look amazing, but they suck. Uh, there's others. Mm, one guy said, hey, Larry, any gear you're currently looking for? Appreciate that. You know what I, I still am going to find one of these days? I don't care how much it costs me. I'm going to, I'm going to find the... Slabboard 59 or 60 Tele Custom. I'm going to find it. The one for me. Um, I've had a couple over the last three or four years, and I haven't kept them because something about the neck shapes aggravated my carpal tunnel right in here. My uh, There's a certain kind of neck shape that really, as soon as I start playing, I can feel something shooting in here, and I can't play it. It happens very rarely, but those necks I stay away from. So... Uh, I'm going to find the one. If anybody out there has a fucking badass two-tone slab board, 59 or 60 Tele Custom, I will pay you handsomely for it. If it is original, and especially if it's lightweight. Mm -hmm. I've also got some badass trade bait, as you guys know. Uh, I do... I have one Tweed Deluxe, but I need I, I need another one. I want to have one in my cartridge, and I want to have one at home. Uh, so if anybody's got an original tranny, mostly original Tweed Deluxe out there, those amps are out of sight price-wise now. Holy shit, people asking over ten grand for them now. I mean, that was a fifteen hundred dollar amp most of my life, and now they're ten grand. It's hard to it's a little hard to get used to for such a simple amp. But, boy, I sure love them. So, I would pay 65 for a really straight one, narrow panel, not a wide panel. If anybody has a 58, 59, 60 out there that's original, and they can't be too ragged. I hate when the tweed's all ragged. It looks like a cat got to it. I hate that. Um, I would pay 65 for one, for a nice tweed deluxe. I think that's all they're worth. That's top buck, by the way. Um, I also would love to find a great Guild 12-string acoustic. I recently bought one. Uh, I didn't keep it. I'm looking for the one. The big jumbo with the crazy flame maple curly, you know, little garish back. That's what I want. Uh... The one I did buy recently, I sold to a friend. And uh, so, if anybody has one of those, let me know. All right, enough rambling. This video is too long. Have a great Easter, friends. I'll see you all later. Bye.